Thanks, Suzanne. I'm not sure who that person is, but I'll try and live up to it. Uh, when I spoke to Suzanne the other day, she asked me uh, if maybe if I could just introduce uh, some of our senior management at the city and some of our managers. We've had a number of changes over the last few years, some new faces, and she thought it'd be a good idea. I know many of you interact with our staff, and sometimes it's by phone or email, and now hopefully most of, most of them are here, and you can now put a face to that. So. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, John Whalen, our chief fire chief. Uh, maybe if you guys could stand up to the back. Chief, he, he looks after our fire department, of course. We have six volunteer halls, uh, a composite hall in Trenton, and also fire prevention. Uh, Brian Johnson is our director of corporate corporate services. Stand up. Brian's group uh, includes our IT department, which uh, looks after all of our IT needs, mm -hmm. our IT needs. Uh, he also has our corporate services department, which is our clerks, which is record management, licensing. If anybody's got married, you probably talked to somebody in that department to get your marriage license. Uh, we also look after cemeteries, so one into the other. Um, and then we uh, also part of Brian's group is our human resources group, and I believe Lori Coxwell Duncan's is our manager. I'll stand up. Uh, it's also here today as well. Uh, of course, all of our employee needs. We also have Caleb Denowden, uh, who's our director of finance. Uh, his group was not called our accounting, uh, our budgeting, so he's a busy guy right now, our long term financing plan and financial reporting, also has purchasing, risk management, and asset and data management. So, lots going on in that group. Uh, Brian Jarden, which some of you probably know, he's our director of planning and development. <laughs> he has been planning, our building inspectors, also under his group. And he also has the pleasure of looking after our bylaw staff, which is always exciting from time to time. Um, next, we have Jacqueline Grimmett, who's our Director of Community Services and Strategic Partnerships. Jack Jacqueline's group includes all of our city facilities. So pretty much every building we own, other than our water and wastewater plants, falls under her. So that's Arena, Sabrina, uh, those, those buildings. And included in her group is also our economic development and tourism. And I believe Linda Lyle is here. And also in Jacqueline's group, we have our corporate communications and community engagement. And Rebecca Cotter is here, who's the manager of that group, well, which also includes our special events. So uh, lots going on in there. We have one other director who uh, couldn't make it today, and I think most of you probably know him anyways, Chris Angelo. He's our director of public works and environmental services, so he's been here for a while. Um, that group, of course, looks after roads and our parks maintenance, garbage and transit. Uh, and we also do have Matt Tracy, who is our manager of water and wastewater, part of that group. And Ken Colasani, who's our engineering manager, so they close the uh, and then I'd also uh, like to introduce probably the most important person here, Claire Quinn, who's the mayor's and my communication uh, officer. So we talk to Ryan. And then I believe we have Tessa Couch here from our IT department who's going to make sure all the slides work perfectly for the mayor. And I think that's all the staff we have here. So thank you very much for the opportunity to introduce them. And we'll say now, hopefully, you can put a face to the name or when you're calling. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Just like to take a second and thank everyone for attending. It's great to see so many people out and about in the room and uh, kind of enjoying their afternoon. Um, my name is Matt Doty, and I am the current president of the Chamber of Commerce. I um, hope everyone enjoyed your lunch um, and the event thus far. Um, I'd like to take a minute to introduce Mayor Harrison to everybody. I already know who he is. Um, Jim Harrison is a retired educator uh, with a master's in education from the University of Toronto. He has served as a counselor for Murray Ward and Winnie West from 1998 to 2014 and was first elected mayor in 2014. 
He was re-elected in 2018 and again in 2022, and is currently serving his third term as the mayor of Queen West. Throughout his time, Jim has operated a dairy farm in Murray and remains a strong supporter of farmers and our agriculture community. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Kim Harris. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I, I, I have to start out and tell you, you may think all those people are important that have been introduced. <laughs> but I have to tell you that the most important person in my life is my wife. And I have to thank her every day because she helps me get I'm, I'm high maintenance. But you know, <laughs> I can tell you that she learned a long time ago because she was Charlie O'Malley's babysitter. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. It sure is. And um, it's it, yeah, it's been a while since we've been here because of I think it's called COVID. Um, Jim Elliott is not here because he has cold. Yes, and uh, he had to start out with a cold, but he's doing okay now. So again, uh, but I uh, seriously I want to thank everybody for being here. I have some counselors that I'll introduce before I go on. I have Councilor Armstrong. Please stand up, show everybody your nice hair today. Yeah. <laughs> One of our starters. <laughs> okay, uh, Councilor Boyce, Ed Boyce. Uh, he's, uh, he's a recent uh, pickleball champion. And, uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, have I missed any counselor? Oh, oh, counselor McHugh here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I should have known. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much, and I appreciate your attendance. It's great to work with each and every one of you, and uh, I really admire all the work that everyone does to help us move forward. That's really the objective. You know, I guess people say I have power, but power is only good if you use it properly. And if you use it properly, then everybody in your city or in your municipality has the option to move forward. And I thank you very much. And thank Todd Smith. I spent a number of days with Todd Smith this week trying to get money out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to wait in line. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's just like Caleb to now. I'll ask Caleb every day if he's got any cash. And I get the same answer. Get the same answer on a regular basis. No, <laughs> well, which is great because uh, you know I I love you and love being with you, but I really don't want to be behind bars. <laughs> and uh, before I start, I want to also thank even James Senior for being here. Thank you very much, sir. It's uh, <laughs> even and I first met in 1972, and uh, unfortunately, we we're pallbearers and, and a friend of ours. Uh, who had passed on due to cancer, but uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, he's he never changed. He's a great supporter of our city and a great supporter of so many things and so many people, and he does it quietly. Thank you very much for all you do, sir, and all you've done, and I know you're going to keep on. I know that. So, and I have to take off my glasses because I can't see with my eyes. Okay, I think I've introduced. Uh, oh, we do have a slide. Uh, yeah, I guess, Clara, maybe you better take it. <laughs> All the members of uh, council for 22 to 26, so uh, thank you very much. And appreciate the fact that they ran and got elected and uh, are willing to work together. And, and uh, that way we can accomplish a great deal. Next, I have Docs by the Bay, and uh, we're consistently and you know, energetically trying to hire doctors. And uh, I understand that we have about uh, 7,000 people, 4,000 people in Quitting West who do not have a family doctor. So we bought the uh, old Lassie Dibbets building over on North Murray Street, the city did, and we will be converting that building into office space for healthcare workers, especially doctors, so all that we can achieve to come here and encourage to come here. And uh, I know that Mayor Ellis was in Toronto this week. He came back and said that he was talking to the health minister and he thinks he's got money for recruitment of doctors. 
Well, I sure hope he does because uh, we're, he's not the only one that needs money. But uh, if, if the ministry starts supporting doctor recruitment, I don't know what Stacy Dobbs is going to say. I can imagine what she'd say. Yes, so uh, we're, we're doing our share. Yes, we are, and we will continue. Paula Mason is in charge of that and doing a great job for us. Uh, so far, we've recruited we created two new positions, <coughs> two or 15 prospective uh, um, activities to talk to doctors and also uh, uh, attended four career fairs and currently have seven doctors uh, interested. Uh, and the new medical building, I hope, will uh, also encourage doctors to come here because it'll have a variety of, you know, of uh, people there and doctors like to work together and work with other parts of the medical field. So that's great. And uh, we also have the uh, Queen West Community Healthcare Center. It's up by, uh, by the hospital, Trevor Mora Hospital. That was built and opened uh, recently. That's a That was a $17 million project and supported by the ministry as well. So that was a great project. And, Look forward to what they, they can offer to all of us and, and all the different uh, areas that are are uh, required. And I'm at the Quinney West Warming Center, which you know, uh, four years ago when I ran for mayor, we didn't have the issues we have to deal with today. We didn't have homelessness like we did. We didn't have people on the street. We didn't have people who are, you know suffering from mental health and addiction like we do today. Yes, I'm sure we have, but not like we do today. And that's the top of the list is everything that, whether it be Chief Whalen's department or OPP or who, you know, top of the list is mental health and addiction. Trying to help people get through difficult situations. And you've also seen recently what's happened in, in different parts of our province with how police officers have been shot. And, and that's not what we want to see. That's not what any of us want to see. That's not a solution. That is not a solution. So we're working hard with uh, you know, the various parts to try to and, and to look after people. We did have a, a nurse and an outreach person, and that was funded by COVID uh, to 125,000, David, correct? And that funding was, was uh, yeah, did expire. So, uh, but this week at the conference, I heard uh, the health minister say that there would be COVID, the COVID funding would continue. That's what I heard. That's what I wanted to hear. I asked, uh, I'm not good to hear that. He said, no, I didn't hear that. But we'll check on it and see if there's any way, because we had a, a, a full time nurse working and we had a part-time person working in the outreach so they were helping people on the streets with their medication and do their forms and get the forms filled out that they were required to get their ODSP and all of those things so that's a very important I think a very important position to hold and to have in in our city and on the streets where it's needed so we'll work on that and of course uh, we talked about work in Quinney, and we talked about the work for, workforce development and all of those good things. Brad's, uh, Brad's always around with uh, different things, trying to let people know what's available and, and how you how you get a job. And, and if you're looking for work, is how you contact. And it's tough. Brad will tell you, it's, it's not easy. The city, we're, we're almost like a, I don't know what you call it, a revolving door. We hire people and we think, you know, they're, they're great, great, and they are, they're great. But then along comes somebody else closer and, and something and says, well, you can, we'll, we'll offer you the job and we'll pay you a little more money or we'll give you a little more holidays or we'll do something different. So, of course, <laughs> they leave us. But we keep we keep doing our best. And thanks, Brad, for all that you do with uh, trying to get this, uh, yeah, trying to help us. Uh, I, I don't know, I haven't uh, talked to the SOB group, and the SOB group's on the, uh, the facility right next to the roundabout by Stockdale Road. They have been going to Toronto uh, twice a day to pick up their employees. Now, whether they're still doing it or not, I'm not sure, but that's what they had to do. 
And why did they have to do that? Well, they couldn't find people here to work, enough people here to work, and they also couldn't find housing. So that's that's the issue: is getting people who want to work and find them a place to live. So, all right. So I'm an official plan update. Thank you. Of course, you know when you, the planners have to be a special kind of individual. It's just like watching paint. <laughs> My opinion. <laughs> Brian, Brian doesn't agree with me. You know, he, he loves this kind of work, and I'm glad he does because everything that he does and he, he requires you to do when you, you go for a building permit or whatever, he makes sure that it's all done legally. Legally. I, I'm not always on that same <laughs> I like to see things done faster. And uh, so, and I'm sure most of you do because most when when you come to see me, it's almost like a last resort. You know, I, I've done all I can here, and it's not moving really quickly enough for me. So, but I uh, I do acknowledge the need to be make sure we're legal so that if you uh, do renovate and David Weir sells your house, David Weir doesn't run into a, a you know an issue with a, a lawyer because something wasn't done properly by us. So that's it's all hand in hand. So. Yeah, what's your plan update? Brad Little, have I missed anything? Brad owns a little bit of property on the west end of the town, west end of the city. He owns quite a bit. And, and the only reason he owns it, the only reason he owns it is he had a fantastic farmer father. <laughs> That's what he had, yes. And, and I had a neighbor who had an apple orchard as well. And uh, Brad's dad used to come and visit the neighbor that I saw or, or lived close to. And the neighbor that, that I went to visit had a liquor cabinet. And in that liquor cabinet was a consistent brand. It was called Bonded Stock. That's all I ever saw in his cabinet was Bonded Stock. And, uh, so that's how I got to know Brad's dad. <laughs> But you know, uh, uh, thank God for fathers and mothers. You know, that's right. Okay. Uh, the other part of our official plan and so on. Uh, are we on to the? Okay, go on to the next slide. Then. Okay. So uh, this year, building permits issued 778 building permits and uh, 143 million, and compared to 2021. We're up by eighteen million dollars, pretty much. That, that's a significant growth and, and increase that's happening. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, we we issue building permits, and it takes time for everybody to go through them. And that's if you have all the staff to do it. So every now and again, when we try and try to hire somebody to do something that that takes time to do and wasn't done. So we're looking at. Uh, the city is tendering for the implement, implementation of an electronic permitting process for implementation in 2023. And this will allow submission of planning and building permit applications electronically. So that's that's where we're headed and trying to get there. So anyway, and that'll be a good good aspect for all of us. I don't it won't it won't reduce the number of people we need, but it will. Um, allow you to get your information in quicker and be responded to, I hope, appropriately, and you get your answer or questions that are being answered. So, housing and municipal housing plan. Yes, we're, we're developing a housing plan for uh, for the city, so we know where the need is, the greatest need is, and we'll look forward to going through that. So. Then, of course, we've got downtown Trenton hybrid parking system is coming into place again. That's, uh, that's that takes time, and um, you know, I, I like the parking the way it is, but that's not the way it will be. So, you're going to have uh, permits, and you're going to uh, you'll have to have some fee, fee structure that'll, uh, that'll be appropriate for downtown parking. Okay, capital, capital projects completed in 22. Centennial boat, boat uh, Centennial Park boat launch and uh, popular uh, and uh, trial re trail revitalization and water system connection between Franklin and Trent. So uh, the uh, city completed the uh, 
many projects and the revitalization construction of Centennial Park boat launch, $2.8 million. Just a boat. That's the way it is. Everything you're going to do, you don't talk thousands anymore, it's millions. And we still don't have the parking all paved in that area. So that's another part that has to be done. And, uh, and, the, and the, the pop ups and revitalization of the trail system at another cost of one and a half million. And then the water system uh, interconnection. And this water system that we did this year came from Glenn Miller to Frankfurt. And what that allows us to do, that's what we call a loop. So we, we can go from Trenton to Glen Miller to Frankfurt and back across down to Panama and back into the Trenton system. Or we can feed it from Bayside. If we have, if something goes wrong in the Trenton system, we have to shut it down. We can feed from Bayside and come back up so that everybody has quality potable water. So that system was a great, uh, great connection from my point of view, and that will hopefully keep everybody functioning. Doesn't affect me, I'm in a well. <laughs> but it's okay because my well is fantastic well it is i can uh, i can fill my swimming pool by putting the a, a, a four inch water line in my well and, and fill my pool so that's how fast the water comes in i think it's 40 seconds to fill one tile where my water is so but i'm not selling it <laughs> And then the other part of it, that's a good thing, but the bad thing is when you get too much rain, your soap pump has to work hard to keep the water down from, yeah. And I, I told you, I was in Toronto two days this week, okay, I come, so I come home, and I come, and I go to City Hall and Jane's home, get a call, better come home, we got water in the basement. Okay, I guess I better come home. So I come home and she had just done a load of laundry. So the water line from the main line to the washing machine started to leak. And it wasn't just a drop. But anyway, somebody was looking after us because that could have started to leak when we were away. Anyway, so we just had to take it apart and put on a new line and, and I still have a clean shirt. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think I've missed anything there. Matt, have I missed anything? Good. Good. Thank you. Smart guy. You wouldn't argue with me right now. Would <laughs> Upcoming capital projects. Well, we've, we've got a number. Uh, it's too bad Ryan Williams isn't here today, but I have spoken to him. We need to, we need as a city to expand the lower road to four, four lanes. That's what we want to do. Four lanes south, four lanes north. Well, that's great, except for the bridge that crosses the canal in 33. That bridge has to be wider. And if you have time someday, measure the bridge on 64 and measure the bridge on 33. And you'll see that the one on 64 is actually wider than the one on 33. Why? I have no idea. Remember one time they talked about replacing the bridge on 64 with a one lane bridge. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, somebody somebody really caught a hold of it and made it wider and yeah, which is great. So if we can just get Ryan to help us widen the 33 and we'll widen the four, uh, highway 40 water road, that'll help the traffic. And we did a traffic study a while ago, Thanksgiving weekend at Labor Day, 43,000 vehicles across those two bridges. Yeah, unbelievable. Anyway, so what else we got? Yeah, we, we've got water lines and water mains from Walmart all the way from Walmart to Tremere Lake or to uh, yeah, from, from Walmart to Tremere Lake out to Hellier Road for the development of the West End Telephone. Angelo Pagluski and, and his group are doing that part. So that's got to be a, an increase in size for the water line there. And we're also looking at a uh, uh, wastewater line from Walmart right east to Fraser Park. And uh, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, we did an uh, upgrade to the wastewater line from Fraser Park right to the to the plant. That was uh, another cheap project, 17 million. But but it's uh, it, it'll be there for a long time. 
and that, and that allows us to grow on the west end. You can't build houses, according to Todd Smith, you can't build houses unless you have water and wastewater. That's what you have to have. So I, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. <laughs> anyway, I'm not being negative, Todd. I'm being negative. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have had support from the province and for construction and and we're looking at uh, provincial funding of 2.1 and 2.8 estimated project costs. So we'll, we'll certainly uh, encourage Todd and um, Ryan to help us there. Upgrades to the water and wastewater, they, they continue to use. And, and as I said, we put in a new line across the river and no one really knew when the original line was put in. But we hammered the original line that went across the river. And why do we put a new line in there across the river? Because we were afraid the old one would fail. And then we would be in a mess. So we put a new one in, we hammered the old one, and it was in perfect shape. So we capped both ends of the old line so that if uh, if there is some emergency, we still have a line that will help us stay out of the water with what should be there. Okay. All right, public works. Yes, uh, 2017, we opened the uh, operations center, and the operations center from my point of view on council is it's, it's a fantastic facility and it's allowed us to, to keep our equipment and then to keep it in, have it in better condition and have it ready to use. And we, when we come in, like a, a night shift comes in to plow, we have a mechanic come in at the same time to make sure everything is, is, is properly, um, I guess you'd say, ready to go to work. And, and it saved us a lot of money. Uh, which director, and I don't think we've had a heavy tow in the last two years. What I mean by a heavy tow is an expensive tow. That's when you have a big, big crane hooks on one of your vehicles, and you can't get off unless you've got a lot of cash. <laughs> so, this this uh, this system, and, and also I mentioned Chief Whalen's. We got a, a new fire truck, I think two, didn't we, John? Yeah, and uh, two new. Uh, I don't know, triaxles or tandems for the public works. And we we couldn't buy them. We tendered one vehicle, a single axle vehicle, and it was tendered in 23, early 20, and we just got it. We just got it for the season. This got it in October, November. And there were three price hikes in that term, but it was a tender price. But our we had the option either pay it or walk away from it. And if you walked away from it, you still didn't have a truck. And we didn't, and we needed this truck to do a lot of the streets in downtown because of the um, single lax truck that fit in and around places. But anyways, these two vehicles here and two that John got are because of the trust that those that Director Angelo and Chief Whalen had with companies. And they you know, they, they, they put out a, you know, maybe I say, look, I need this. Can you help me get it? And they, the people they deal with know that his word is good. And yes, we can help you. We'll get it. We'll get it for you. And they did. Same with Director Angela. In fact, those two trucks there, we got from a lot. And Waynesville will help us get one from down south, south U.S. And another one from east. But we got them and bought them for less money and a municipality close to was paid for a tender price. So that was great. And uh, you wouldn't see it, but on one of the new trucks, we have what you call a spinner. And the spinner is out on the sides, and that, that puts your salt and sand where it needs to be. Well, one of the new trucks has a conveyor that goes right or left. So you've got two spinners, and now you can do the center of the road, the edge of the road, or the intersection. So you don't have to turn around and come back in and do it. So that's, that's been a big plus for us. And again, with the mechanics we have, and, and we, we keep parts, not as many as we maybe should, but we do keep some parts. And and if you ever look, why well, you look at your own vehicle? Salt is, you know, is the enemy. Dirt, salt are everyone's enemy when it comes to your vehicle. And it's the same with these trucks. That salt that they put out there is, is contagious and corrosive. Corrosive, yes. And it sure hits us hard with it. But, and you'll see uh, when, when we shut down in the spring, those conveyors that take your sand and salt out, they're, they're almost completely gone. 
There's no, there's no, no way you can, you can repair it. Just throw it away and put a new one. That's the way to do it. Anyway, so, uh, and, and as I'm saying, this operation center has allowed us to be much more efficient and, and effective and uh, handle the equipment uh, in a better way and so it's ready to go when we need it. And it also uh, takes less repairs. So. Okay, fire and rescue. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I really thank the system we've got here. We have a volunteer composite system. We have full time volunteers, 130 volunteers, I think, in that area. Dave McHugh was a volunteer for a good many years, good many years. And I, and I thank him because those volunteers respond very fast. And so especially the area they respond to, Station 2, responds to 401. 401. And yeah, it's a lovely place to drive, right? Yes. Anyway, anyway uh, that's another project that uh, provincial government's working on. They're just a little behind on it, but they're coming. They're, they're getting it done. They're getting it done. But as I said, Station 2 responds to the 401, and, and they're fantastic. And the training and, and so on that, they, that those volunteers have that they bring with them. If, if you're out there and you're in an emergency situation, those are the guys, those are the people, I shouldn't say guys, because there are women there too, and they're equally as capable, maybe even more. But they're out there, they're out there, and they're doing what needs to be done to, to save us all the help and And those accidents that they go to, man, yeah, I just shake my head, and I admire them and respect them for doing what they do. And it's not something for me. I can kill a cow and all that, but I can't handle this. This is this is the same thing. This is uh, this is just totally different. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, thanks, John, and and I really, uh, uh, you know, I respect all the diversity that you have and that you deal with so well, so that we have a, a strong component of people to respond when needed. So, and and we do. Uh, Director Clazy, I've got to teach him a lesson. You know, do you remember how many fire halls he said we have? Anybody? Six. Well, he's leaving one out, I guess, because we've got seven. We have seven fire halls. Maybe he left out number one. Maybe that's it, right? Anyways, we have, we have one. One is downtown Trenton. Two is on number two at the West End. Three is the Bayside. Four is Tucker's Corners. Five. Five is. Uh, yeah, six, five and six, five, is it five or six is on the west end of uh, New York, Murray, seven is Frankfurt. John, where's five? That's uh, uh, Padawan, your worship. Padawan, okay. All right, thank you. All right, well, anyways, they're all, uh, and, and all our facilities are, are well equipped, well equipped and well trained. Those uh, individuals in there, the managers, the directors, of the fire chief and all the people are very, very dedicated, committed to being, being qualified to respond. And that's another thing that the province is going is demanding soon that every volunteer has a certification. And that's that's why I don't have any problem with that because that reduces my liability as mayor and yours as a counselor and so on. But in order to be trained, we used to have to go to Gravenhurst. We used to have to go to Gravenhurst. But thanks to Charlie, yeah, Chuck Nathan and Robert Rudder and a number of other guys, Dale Milligan and so on, we built our own training center. We have our own training center here, and uh, Loyalist College is a big part of the program. The Loyalist is a big part of the program, and so that means that the students who are in the Loyalist program can train here either paramedics or, or fire, or fire and rest, whatever works, but they can train right here at our facility. And Chuck Nathan was a, was a big part of that, that project. And, and I dare say it was evaluated to be well over a million dollars. Chuck built it for 160,000. Yes. Chuck, how'd you do it for 160,000? That's all the money I had. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly his answer. It's all the money I had. But he encouraged you or others, Trent Cole Stories, Pretty Mobile, and so on, to support that project. He encouraged you to support it, and you did. 
and uh, guys like Dale Milligan and so on. They put a lot of hours. Dino LeClaire, and I shouldn't mention names because there are so many that I, I'm leaving out. But those are the people who were responsible for making that training center and and and, make, and then along with Loyalist College and curriculum developing a program that uh, fits right into today's needs. So thank you very much. Yes, a great deal of events in 2022. We had over 100 events and they were all great, all well attended. And uh, Mother Nature helped because it was supposed to be good weather. Um, and then, of course, showing all the good things that we have. As I mentioned earlier, we put a million plus in a boat launch. We did one up closer to the police station, and that's another boat launch that's well used. And it's safe. They're safe and they're uh, yeah, very accessible. And we also have rescue uh, a rescue boat at, uh, located at the, right by the police station, and the police have their boat there as well. And and our, our objective isn't to find people. The objective is to encourage people to vote and vote safely. That's the objective. Education, yeah, enjoy it. I shouldn't tell you this. 2010, I, I want some money. So I said to my wife, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy something with this that I wouldn't buy. So I bought a boat. Anyway, it's been on the water a couple of times. But uh, <laughs> the first time, first time, in, my water is, my wife is underwater with a face. Okay, so um, we went down to Basel and coming back on the north side there by, yeah, and I hit rocks. I hit rocks. Rocks flew. Parts of the motor flew. <laughs> Jane, Jane wasn't happy. I'm um, very unhappy, to be honest with you. And, uh, I'd say she's ridden in it once since, maybe. And it might not have been in the water. <laughs> Anyways, I. Uh, my grandsons will use it. <laughs> so I, I can only tell you that boats are great. Yes, they are. And I had a depth finder too. On the boat. I, I didn't bother with that. Really. It gets worse, doesn't it? <laughs> The other part that uh, I want to mention too, which is fantastic, I a lot of good things. The Golden Box, the Huskies are doing well, and uh, we're, 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 we're making progress there. But the Royals, the, the baseball clubs are, are association has uh, worked hard, and Chris Lyle and a number of the coaches and so on are, are to be you know, commended for what they do. And uh, they have, uh, um, Right, I've been awarded the uh, Queen Royals with the 14 under and the 16 under provincial championships. Each division will have 12 of the best games, best teams in Ontario enjoying the Quinney region. And they'll be playing ball at the Bayshore Park and at the Rotary Park in Belleville and at the uh, Jim Jones Field and at Melrose Diamond and, and Melrose Diamond and Diamond League. So, Congratulations to all those uh, people who work with the baseball teams, and uh, you know, you you like. It's hard for you and I to imagine. You know, you apply for something and it should happen, right? That's what should take place. Well, it does. It takes a lot of patience and perseverance, and you, you know, you you wait in line, wait in line, and it doesn't happen this year. But you go back again, just like John Cairns. You know, you go back again, and you keep you keep. And finally, they are successful. So that's great. And at the same time, we've got Leon's building a homestead here, right close to, to, to where we are. And that's a fantastic project, too. Great. So, uh, have I left anything out there? Oh. Upcoming community events, the Trenton Pond Hockey, that's another one coming up in a few weeks. And uh, I, according to the weather, I think it will be good. And that's, again, raising the funds for the hospital and for uh, wounded warriors, veterans. Okay. All right, community in action. So there's a, a number of things there. The, the group down here in the, on the bottom right, uh, they're a group of sewers. They come to City Hall and they sew and 
cut these things out, put them all together, and make it into a pajama. You know, but don't that fix anything for me? Yes, they volunteered, but I can't say I'll ever be able to wear it again. But, uh, but they, uh, they, they do this and they volunteer their, their help and what they make goes to help somebody somebody else. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If there's any short questions, uh, I'm sure somebody can answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did anybody have a question for Mayor Hood? No. I think he. I think he answered. He covered a lot of topics. Um, uh, we're going to play a, a quick little video here in a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to uh, recognize um, a few of the honorary lifetime members are actually with us today. Uh, so we have uh, Eben James. Can you please stand up? He's one of our honorary members. So I sit down and wait when anybody knows who you are. <laughs> we have uh, Mike Cowan with us today. And we also have uh, Mark Phillips in the back. And it hasn't been announced publicly yet, um, but I'm going to let you guys know um, that our 2023 um, recipient is actually for the first time going to be a husband and wife couple, which we think is great because it's really, they both do such an amazing job running their company. It's going to be um, Ken and Cynthia Schmidt. So that's going to be our recipients for this year. And we'll be uh, getting all the press releases out and Tickets will go on sale in February for our president's dinner, and hopefully many of you can join us and, and help us celebrate all the great contributions that Ken and Cynthia have made, not only to Quinty West, but I think the entire uh, Quinty region. So very excited um, about that. Um, and also, I think it's a probably good to mention, Mark, uh, Mark was just telling me that the pickleball tournament uh, that, uh, Mark, um, that uh, Ken was instrumental in organizing, uh, the Quinty West team, yes, they did win. Um, Mark actually told me off for asking who won. He said, you should have known the answer to that question. And they won and they raised over $40,000 uh, for the That was so amazing. And um, uh, is the video ready to go? Okay, come on up. We're going to um, play just a very, a very short video at the end of uh, 2022. Um, Jennifer and Morgan uh, worked uh, with Love and Delay Media to put together a new membership video. Our membership, our business community is really changing and evolving. Um, we really noticed it through COVID and we thought it was definitely time for new video. So just enjoy, it's just a couple of minutes long. I like those five words. <laughs> The chamber has done like more than I can. The Quinny West Chamber of Commerce is really here to help you belong in your community, to help give you a hand up as you start to develop and grow your business. So the Chamber of Commerce, I think, is a great opportunity for any businesses to join because one, they help out any small businesses, whether it's small or large, <clears> one <throat> employee up to 500 or 5,000 employees. There's always something or some business within the chamber that can help you out with whatever you need. They'll set up seminars and webinars and create connections with other business partners in the area through their regular updates, their events, their emails. Uh, we really appreciate the e-news that they send out regularly. Freshco has been part of the Chamber of Commerce since uh, 1998 when we started our business. It was one of the first things that we did to make sure that we were connected to our community. They've been instrumental in helping me and supporting me, guiding me through employee issues, um, employer issues, WSIB remittance, um, all of those things that really have affected our business because of uh, the way people started to work. They also tell us what new businesses are, and I'm able to pass that on to customers and my fellow peers as well. As a small business owner, I don't have the time or the knowledge or wherewithal to 
advocate for myself at all levels of municipal, provincial, and federal government. The different levels of the Chamber of Commerce, Canadian Chamber, the Provincial Chamber, and the local Quinney West Chamber are advocating on behalf of small business owners. And it's great to have someone in our corner uh, pushing for our values. It's good to know that we have a partner that understands the challenges we face as a local manufacturer. They recognize the need and they assist where they have influence and the voice. A certificate of origin is a document that we generate um, for every shipment that confirms that our product is made here in Canada. However, we do have one customer that requires us to go a step further. So that's when we reached out to their local chamber of commerce for help and they agreed to provide a service where they stamp the certificate of origin. The chamber of commerce has been extraordinarily helpful. I joined and right from day one, they were offering to advertise for me and then they did the ribbon cutting and that was just so much fun. And it's really cool seeing my name in all of their literature. And I've got lots of work like that. I've got people messaging me saying, you know, we're also members of the chamber and there's that member to member discount. And it, it feels like a sense of community. Like it feels like really warm. You know, having group benefits has been very important for us um, because it, it helps all of our employees maintain that, you know, balance between work, life, health, um, just everything is so important to them. We have very comprehensive, um, great benefit package that we're able to offer to our employees and that they can take full use of, but still keeping the cost down so that it is affordable for us. So the Quinney West Chamber of Commerce is a natural hub for the work I do as the Chamber Plan Employee Benefits Consultant. I'm on the road a lot, so the ease of booking and the ability to pick my flexible office space really helps me bring uh, clients together in a centralized location. This space is fantastic because it's easy for my clients to find. There's lots of parking and it's easily accessible by wheelchair for both the ramp and the washrooms. It's a clean, great professional space. The Quinty West Chamber of Commerce really is there to help me feel like I belong in the business community. There you go, that's it. And that's going to segue right into it is membership renewal time. Uh, so, uh, now that you know all the great reasons why you belong, you're already all members. Uh, so just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, Jennifer uh, has had all the packages at the front uh, for your membership renewals with all of the um, the new business directory and the member to member discount cards and the I belong book and everything is in there. Uh, so hopefully you picked it up on your way in. If not, uh, check the table on the way out. We really appreciate the support of our business community. You guys are fantastic. And it's because of your support we've been able to, to grow and become uh, such a, a stable, uh, relevant in, uh, organization in our community. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. I hope you enjoyed our presentations from uh, David and Mayor Harrison. And I hope you have a better understanding of what's going on at the City Hall. So thank you.